Welcome to the Year of the Spirit Life, where we are experiencing the Zoe, which is the God kind of life, the kingdom life. That is why I'm bringing to you kingdom divine messages that are meant to transform your mentality and to transform your mindset for you to be able to live according to God's original plan of dominion and rulership. So grab your Bible, your notebook, and your pen for you to write down the vision that you are going to walk through in this coming year. Be blessed as you watch. Thank you for joining us for another spirit-filled message with Prophet Fadzai brought to you by Revelation of Christ Church Worldwide. We bring comfort to God's people through the revelation of the word and prayer. We hope that this message will be a blessing to you and help you understand the kingdom and enjoy the spirit life. Now, let's get into the message. Good morning, church. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I believe you are all blessed this wonderful morning. Hallelujah. God bless you in Jesus' name. Let us read today's message from the book of Mark. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, which means teacher, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. For your word is there to transform us. Your word is there to teach us. Your word is there to rebuke us. Your word is there to correct us. Your word is there to instruct us and empower us. We thank you, Lord, that we are going to receive total transformation in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. I'm going to share with you some, some lessons from this short passage that are going to help you as a believer in the name of Jesus. From the first verse we read here, verse 46, it's speaking about Jesus together with the disciples and with a large group of people. And the word of God is saying when Jesus was leaving the city, there was a blind man who then shouted and said, Son of David, have mercy on me. The scripture is showing us that it was at the end when someone received his breakthrough. It was when Jesus was leaving the town, leaving the city, that God located a blind man. Many of us, we cry because we think we are at a dead end. But at the dead end, it's when sometimes God touches you for your promotion. God touches you for your healing. God touches you for your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. We must not cry because we think time is running out. We must not cry when we think that we are, our backs are on the wall. It is finished for us. Blind Bartimaeus, I'm sure in his heart, he was thinking that it's over for him. Because Jesus was already leaving the city. How was he going to go and meet Jesus in another city when he was blind? Hallelujah. So you must be encouraged in your heart that Jesus appears even at the last minute to minister to you. He appears even at the very last minute to promote you. 
The Bible is saying blind Bartimaeus was sitting by the roadside begging. This man was blind. His situation of blindness led him to sit by the roadside and started begging. Never allow your situation to lead you into another deeper problem. Because this man's challenge was blindness only. But the blindness led him to sit by the roadside and started begging. Blindness, in a spiritual sense, simply means lack of vision. When you don't have a vision of where you are going, when you are not seeing where you are going, it is easy for you to sit by the roadside and not do anything. And wait for people to come and throw coins in your plate. Am I speaking to somebody? Many believers today, because they are blind spiritually, they don't see where they are going. Their blindness will lead them to be idle. Their blindness, the lack of vision, leads them to sit by the roadside and become subject to the spirit of begging. Ask your neighbor, are you a beggar? Ask your other neighbor, are you a beggar? Beggars are not just people who are sitting out there. We are having beggars even in the house of God. What do I mean when I say beggars? Blind Bartimaeus is sitting down by the roadside. So whatever that is going to eat, whatever that is going to do in his life, he is waiting for someone else to help them. So when I say a beggar, I'm not talking about asking money to your friends. I'm talking about waiting for someone to do something so that you may say, now I'm going to prosper. Many people today are sitting down waiting for something to happen, for them to take a step forward. Many are waiting for a government to change so that they can say, yeah, now I'm a candidate of prosperity. Many people are waiting for certain events to happen in their lives. Half of you are waiting to win Powerball. <laughs> you are waiting to win Powerball so that you can say, yeah, now I'm a candidate of prosperity. Ask your neighbor, when are you going to win the lottery? When I win the lottery, now I'm going to start investing. I love property, so I'm going to start engaging property when I win lottery. You, that time you are saying that when you just finished matric. Five years later, yeah, lottery, ha, powerful. Now it's on 103 million. 30 years, yeah, yeah, powerful. 40, powerful. 50, powerful. 60, powerful. So blind Bartimaeus was in that same situation. His lack of vision led him to be seated by the roadside. Ask your neighbor, where are you sitting? What are you waiting for? Ask your neighbor again, where are you sitting? And why are you sitting? Because blind Bartimaeus was only blind. His hands were working. His brain was working. His legs were working. Every other body part was working. The only problem was the eyes. So it teaches us that lack of vision can destroy the function of all the other body parts. Am I speaking to somebody? If you lack vision, every other thing around you collapses. He was sitting by the roadside begging. Verse 47. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I like this verse. He did not see Jesus, this man. The Bible is saying he heard that it was Jesus. 
I thank God that though you were sitting, his hearing heart was not blocked. Because the Bible says, faith comes by hearing, and by hearing the word of the Lord. So even if your vision is affected, you must be having a hearing heart. So that when an opportunity is being presented before you, you are being taught how to move as a Christian. It is easy for you to receive the message. And the message brings your sight. Many people today who are struggling with their vision spiritually. When I say vision, I'm not talking about prophesying. I'm talking about vision of life. Vision of yourself as a believer. Where are you going? What are you going to do? So when our vision is affected, our hearing heart is also affected. We can't allow God to speak to us. We can't allow God to teach us. Tell your neighbor, have a teachable spirit. Have a hearing heart. Learn to hear what God is communicating because in your hearing, you are drawing closer to your breakthrough. Hearing is obedience. Let me give you a good example. Genesis 12. Abraham is in his father's house. At that old age, he did not want anything. I'm sure he had been in that father's house for many years. And then God appears to this man. He says, leave your father's house. Go to a place that I will show you. And I'm going to bless you there. Am I speaking to somebody? In a normal, natural sense, Abraham would have decided to say, I'm not going. I'm already comfortable in my father's house. But there, he was having a hearing heart to say, this is the voice of God speaking to me. Therefore, I must leave everything and be obedient to it. Am I speaking to somebody? Many of us today, when God speaks a word to you, you reason with God. Do you think it was comfortable for Abraham to leave his father's house to go to a place he does not know? It was not comfortable, but he obeyed the voice of God because he understood that when God speaks to me, even though it might not be comfortable, but there's a blessing for me at the end. Many of us, we think that only when things are comfortable, that is when God is speaking. God can give us an instruction that is uncomfortable. Remember when Abraham was sent to a place of his blessing, the Bible says when he arrived in that land, he found other people already possessing the land. Hallelujah. So which means God lied to Abraham to say, go to that land. According to a human point of view, Abraham was looking at a land that is empty. That is not having anyone. Hallelujah. When he arrived there, now God knew what he was doing. It was not comfortable for him, but he was having a hearing heart. Even if he arrived at that place and found people staying there, he still believed in his heart that God sent me here. When we started this ministry, I had a word that I had received from God to go and start a ministry in Rustenburg. Now, when we are about to start the ministry, I am sure we once did a crusade there in Rustenburg. I said, God is speaking to me about Rustenburg. But God was not speaking to me at that moment. I was holding on to a word that God had spoken to me in the past. So when I obeyed the word, I arrived in Rustenburg. When we were doing a crusade, almost 90% of the people who were in the crusade had come from Pretoria, Joburg, this side. I think there was only one person from Rustenburg. Hallelujah. So when I was there, I was learning that, okay, I was obedient to the voice that is telling me. And this environment is, is very dry. I came back. When I came back, 
I saw a vision. I was given keys to a certain warehouse in Centurion, where we started in Centurion. Then there was a white man who was opening a door for me. It was a small building in the vision. And the Lord was saying, go and start the ministry in this place. Let me tell you the truth. That location was not good for me according to my human point of view. Because I was looking at how are the Texans going to come to this place? How are people going to come to this place? This place is hidden. But when I woke up from the vision, because I was having a hearing heart, I just said, yes, say I'm going there, even if it's not comfortable for me. Hallelujah. Many of us, when we, walk, when we wake up from such a dream, Lord, if it's you, I must see a beautiful building with, with, with lights and, and speakers, which means this is not you speaking. You become disobedient. You are a young woman, for example. I've given this example many times. You are praying that, God, I want to marry a millionaire. Hallelujah. And then God brings a very broke person that is going to be a millionaire in two months and present it to you. And you say, no, this is not you, God, because I prayed. The Bible said, whatever I declare, I decree, it shall be established. So this is not you speaking because this is not what I asked for. Because you are seeing it from a human point of view. You are not seeing that tomorrow, the prayer you prayed, the answer is going to be answered tomorrow while you are already engaged with the person. So many of us, we have missed out on what God wants to do because we do not have a hearing heart. Each time God speaks to you, you argue with God. Why me? Why not this brother? Why not this sister? Why are you sending me to the village? Why are you not sending me to Italy to preach the gospel? Why are you not sending me to America? Why are you sending me to, to, to Limpopo? Why are you sending me to Zimbabwe? Why are you sending me to Mozambique? Tell your neighbor, I have a hearing heart. So this man heard that Jesus of Nazareth was passing. He did not see. He heard. I'm sure you heard some people giving testimonies here. I received one, two, three, four, five because of the message I heard. And I practiced the message. Hearing. Hearing heart. Teachable spirit. Hallelujah. He heard that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is passing by. Let's hear what this man said. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Stop there. He heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth passing. Religion was teaching them that this man is Jesus of Nazareth, the son of a carpenter. The blind man had an inner revelation that no, this is the man who was prophesied in the past, a son of a king. So what this blind Bartimaeus did, he jumped from religion and entered the spirit life, entered the kingdom, left religion. That's why he did not call him Jesus of Nazareth. He said, son of David. He is now speaking to a king. The person standing next to you, I mean, standing in front of you right now is Prophet Fadzai. When I leave this place, I remove this shirt. If you meet me at my house sometimes, or if you meet me at the mall, I will be brother Fadzai sometimes. Hallelujah. Maybe we grew up together. I'm your friend. Fadz or Fadzai or Jason. I'm your friend. Hallelujah. Maybe we are husband and wife. I'm your husband. Hallelujah. Then there's a time where I'm no longer these people. I become God's servant. Prophet Fadzai. So when I pray in my prayer room, God, bless brother so and so, sister so and so. And then God downloads what he wants me to give the brother. 
in the spirit as a servant of God. I'm delivering something to you. When I come in your presence, when you see your friend that you grew up with, when you see your friend, when you see your associate, when you see your business partner, when you see your boyfriend, when you see your husband, the one who is carrying what you are supposed to receive, Prophet Fadzai, steps aside. You interact with Brother Fadzai. Are you getting it? So what you want is in Prophet Fadzai, but you are busy with Brother Fadzai. That is why the Bible says, if you receive a prophet in a prophet's way, you receive the prophet's reward. So when you are facing a prophet now, and you see me as your friend we grew up with, what you want to receive in the spirit won't be able to be passed to you because you are familiar with me. We grew up together. You are my brother. You are my sister. You are, I'm your husband. I'm your friend. I'm your older brother. I'm your younger brother. I'm your friend. We do business together. We chat on WhatsApp together. The difference between Jesus of Nazareth and Jesus, son of David. So if you become familiar with a person, that is why during the time of Jesus, they were saying they don't believe that Jesus is the Messiah because they know him. He's son of David, the son of Joseph, a carpenter. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Yet they were having a Messiah because they were not opened spiritually to see that this is the manifestation of a prophecy. Am I speaking to you? Are you learning something? So this is a lesson even in the church here. This is a lesson even in this ministry. You must be able to differentiate the spirit man and the physical man. You must be able to know that this moment we are in now, this is a spiritual moment. This person that is speaking now is not my friend. This person that is speaking is not my brother. For you to be able to receive spiritual things, familiarity breeds contempt. That is why you find that most people who are around anointed people, sometimes their life becomes miserable while they are close to solution. We find husbands married to anointed women struggling to pass through certain areas while they sleep in the same bed with the anointed person. While they eat in the same plate, stay in the same house. We see wives struggling with certain issues while they are staying with anointed person when they go out together to the church, that same person touches another person. The person gives a testimony. But the person walking with this person every day is not testifying and is having the same problem with that one. You, you understand it? So when you, first, when you encounter things like that in your life, you must check your heart. How do I see this person? As Jesus of Nazareth, or Jesus, the Son of God. God can use a person from nowhere to come and bless you. But if you observe it from the physical point of view, you might chase the person who wants to bless you away because you are not seeing the spiritual aspect of the person coming to you. Hallelujah. 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 Are you understanding this? So, blind Bartimia said, I will not enter religion. Let me enter the spirit life. The spirit life teaches us about the kingdom of God, where Jesus is from the kingdom, kingship. Religion has failed to open my eyes. Let me switch to the kingdom message, kingdom principles, kingdom ment mentality. So he said, son of David, have mercy on me. Verse 48. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. 
Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. Because there were religious people around him. When they saw that this man is trying to move towards the breakthrough, they started speaking words to discourage him. Hallelujah. Each time you are trying to break forth from a family cycle, each time you are trying to break forth from a religious cycle, you will always attract negativity. You will always attract insults. You will always attract resistance. When you were taught in the past by religion, for example, that you are not receiving things because you are a sinner. Tomorrow when you are taught again that the sins were already dealt with by the Lord Jesus on the cross. So today is no longer about your righteousness, but Jesus' righteousness. That message is difficult for you to receive it because already you have been programmed that you must work out to be righteous on your own without the grace of God, without the anointing of God, without the power of God. So the testimonies you are looking for in your life, you are trying to bring them by your own strength. Hallelujah. Religion. Religious people, they stopped. Don't shout anymore. Keep quiet. How many people have spoken negative words how many people have criticized you and it has stopped you from doing what God wants you to do? You have been offended by the words that people have spoken in your life. And those, those words have stopped you from going forward. Let's hear what blind Bartimaeus said. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. He did not take offense. To say, they said this, so I'm no longer going to save again. They said this to me, so I'm not going to give again. They did this to me, so I'm no longer going to do it. The Bible is saying, blind Bartimaeus shouted the more. When people reject you, when people attack you, when people fight you, speak up against you, whatever God has called you to do, do it the more. There are many times in my life where I have stopped God's program because I was hurt somewhere. So when I'm hurt, my heart is in pain. I say, uh, stop this service that is coming here. Let's stop it. Because my heart is heavy. Then the Holy Spirit told me and said, are you not seeing that this is the devil's trap to stop you to fulfill your assignment? So he knows that if he offends you, you are going to stop everything and focus on the pain that is in your heart. So from that time, I realized that each time offense comes, there's a breakthrough ahead. So when the offense comes, I keep on pushing. I keep on going until I have received what God wants me to receive. He shouted the more. Tell your neighbor, shout the more. Shout the more. When they attack you about how you are praying, pray the more. When they speak about how you are going to church time and again and nothing is moving, go to church the more. When you are serving in a department and they are speaking bad about you while you are serving, they don't pull out and say, I'm leaving the place because they are speaking about me. You save the more. Because you are not serving men, you are serving God. He shouted the more. So don't let the words of people, don't let negativity stop you from fulfilling God's purpose. Remember, God is the one who assigned you for his assignment and his purpose. When you were alone, those people who are trying to discredit you, they were not there. When God spoke to you and said, go and save, go and sing, go and sweep, go and give, go and carry the camera. Hallelujah. Next verse. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So each time you switch from religion and focus on building your kingdom mindset, it draws the attention of Jesus. It makes Jesus to stop and address your situation. 
Jesus talked and said, call him. So they called him to, they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet. Jesus is calling you. These are the same people that had told him before. That keep quiet. You are not going anywhere. So the same people who were attacking him are the people now who are calling him. Cheer up, cheer up. Jesus is calling you. Verse 50. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. Stop there a bit. This man, blind Bartimaeus, is wearing a cloak or a jacket or a jersey or whatever his garment that he is using to sit by the roadside and beg, which means this is a garment of shame. This is a garment of poverty. This is a garment of begging. When he encountered Jesus, the first thing he did was to remove the garment, old garment, and run to Jesus. So which means he removed the old garment and went to Jesus naked. Am I speaking to you? He did not carry his old garment to try and get help from Jesus while he's still holding on to the past. When Elijah was taken by the whirlwind in a chariot of fire, when his mantle fell down, the Bible said Elisha tore his mantle. So when Elisha tore his mantle, the mantle of Elijah now fell on Elisha. The mantle was never going to fall on Elisha while Elisha is still wearing his old mantle. The woman at the well, she came from a village to come and fetch water. And then she met Jesus. Jesus told her, if you know the person you are talking to, you will never be thirsty again. You don't need to come here. And when she had an encounter with Jesus, the Bible said, she threw down her bucket, ran back to the village. Remember, this person had come to fetch water. She was supposed to go back with the water to the village. But she threw away the bucket. Why? She had found living water. So she did not need the old bucket anymore. But many of us were still holding the old bucket. And you are trying to get living water, living water while you are holding the same bucket. You are believing the report of the enemy while you are coming from prayer room. You are feeling pain on your side here. You enter prayer room. Father, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. I'm healed. Then you come out from the prayer room, full of the Spirit. When you were in the prayer room, you felt that no, there's no more pain here. Once you step out of the prayer room, you just feel a, a pain, a, a bit of pain. You say, hmm, yeah, I know I'm a believer. Yes, yes, I know I'm a Christian, but let me just visit uh, this Sangoma here. Yeah, I know they can just help me. To just flush this thing. When you are going there, you are praying in tongues. Are you seeing it? That your actions are opposite to what you are confessing. So we need to throw the clock aside. And go empty to Jesus. Remember what I told you some few weeks back. That there are only two people in the Bible. That Jesus said to them. You have great faith. The others, you would say, your faith has made you well. You have faith. But only two people, he said, you have great faith. The centurion man, that soldier, and the woman who was having a child who was possessed with evil spirits. And I taught you that the common factor for these people to receive this kind of blessing, these people were Gentiles, which means they were non-believers. So when they came to Jesus... They did not come to Jesus based on the other knowledge they had about Christianity. They did not come to Jesus knowing that he operates like this. Their focus was on Jesus and their deliverance. So they received the deliverance immediately. So the danger now is when we have stayed in Christianity for too long. When we are approaching Jesus, we are approaching Jesus with the doctrine of the church you grew up in. The message you heard on YouTube. The message you saw on Facebook, the message you saw on Twitter, we must throw away the old cloak, old garment, and go to Jesus and say, give me a new garment. I don't want the old garment.
You see the story of Jonah. Thank you, Lord. You see the story of Jonah. Jonah is on another people's boat. And then they, their boat is sinking. They said, let us throw our property outside. So they were throwing their property, not knowing that the person that is causing the boat to sink is not the property that they are having. It is Jonah. So they need to throw Jonah into the water. So from a human point of view, throwing Jonah outside of the boat, it's murder. But in the spirit, it was bringing breakthrough. You get the idea. To throw Jonah in the water, they were committing murder. But in the spirit, it was bringing breakthrough to them. It is like when you are having, let's say you are married, for example, and then you are having a, a girlfriend. It's an example. And then you pay rent for that girlfriend. You take the children to school. And then one day the word of God convicts you. That stop what you are doing. You want to stop. Hallelujah. You want to stop. But your other mind is saying, if you stop this, you are affecting the future of these kids. Because they are already in private school. You are affecting the life of this lady because she is already living a good life. So if you pull out from supporting these people, you are committing a sin. Hallelujah. So you will find that now you are still stuck in that place because you are still wearing that cloak. You cannot let go the of the cloak because of the message that the devil is preaching to you. Hallelujah. So you will find yourself going back again and again. Not because you still want it, but because there is something that you are still attached to with that person. So throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Do you hear the question of Jesus? What do you want me to do for you? Specific question. It just needed a specific answer. This man did not respond and say, Lord Jesus, remove me from the roadside. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. He did not say, Rabbi, remove me from the roadside. Rabbi, give me one million so that these people, they don't keep on blessing me with the coins. All he wanted was the restoration of vision. Restoration of vision. He knows or he was knowing from this moment that if my, my vision is restored, all these things, I can easily get them. When my eyesight, my spiritual sense is opened for me to know what to connect to, I can easily receive these things. Jesus asked him, the blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. So he was straight to the point. Verse 52. Listen, listen carefully to this statement of Jesus. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. This man is standing before Jesus. This man is blind. Jesus does not say to this man, your eyes be open." Jesus says to this man, go. Hallelujah. Jesus says to this man, go. How can I go, Jesus? I'm blind. I'm here for my eyes to be opened. So I want you to speak something concerning my eyes. And Jesus is not addressing the issue of eyes. Jesus is saying, go. So in his going... He attracted the restoration of sight. In his obedience to go, he attracted sight. Sometimes God tells you to go somewhere, to do something, to say something that is against what you are praying for. Or that is contrary to what you are praying for. Hallelujah. You are praying that God opens your eyes and he is not dealing with the issue of the eyes. He is saying go. Your faith has made you well. So what he's simply saying is, in your obedience to my word, you are going to receive your breakthrough. 
if blind Bartimaeus was like many of us today, he would still stand there and say, I won't go until my eyes are open. I won't leave this place until my eyes are open. How many times have you neglected God's blessing for your life because you could not simply say yes to the word that says go? When the word says go, you say, I don't qualify. When the word says go, you say, I'm young. When the word says go, I'm black. When the word says go, I'm a woman. When the word says go, ah, I can't handle this. It's too much. It's too heavy for me. In your going, that's when you receive the grace that will sustain you in your place of breakthrough. Many times you have come to the man of God here to be prayed for. And then the man of God does not speak about your condition. And he says to you, go and prosper. In your going, that's when prosperity is going to come. The healing is going to come. The deliverance is going to come. But you are told to go when you are leaving, you are angry. You are bitter. Hallelujah. So your going is an act of faith. Abraham's going from the father's house to a land he does not know. It is act of faith. In the church here, you, are, you play guitar in the church. You are playing guitar here. I'm the pastor of this church. Which means I hear God about everything that is happening in this church. I say, leave guitar. Go and clean the toilet. You become bitter. Why are they making me to leave guitar here? I, I, God showed me that I must, leave, I must play guitar here. Now they are degrading me. They are putting me to toilets here. They want me to touch the dirty things here in the toilet. Now you have missed what God wanted to do in your going to the toilet. Hallelujah. In your going. Tell your neighbor, in your going, that's where the blessing is. And each time God tells you to go, take note of this, it is never favorable for you. Each time God tells you to go, it is never comfortable for you. It is always painful. Why should I go? when I'm supposed to receive what I'm supposed to receive here. But in your going, that's when you are going to receive what God wants to give you. So God has spoken to you many times. Go. Go and do it. Go and say it. Go and do this. Go and do this. And you have always said, no, I'm not going to do it until I receive my blessing. I'm not going to do it until I see something. I'm not going to do it until I see something. Matthew 6 verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It's a simple message of saying, go and focus on the kingdom and the righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. But when you are told to go, you are saying, no, I want these things first. I, can't, I cannot go there because I want food. I cannot go there because I want finances. I cannot go there because I want certain things. Hallelujah. In this ministry, let me give you a good example before we pray. In this ministry, I, I've shared this many times. There are people that I come across, especially workers in this ministry. And when I look at them, the Lord whispers to me that this person is hungry or they don't have food in their house. And many times, when I want to bless that person, the Holy Spirit said, no, leave them. It is their processing. So if you interfere in my processing, you are delaying these people. Hallelujah. So maybe the person comes to me and say, I'm hungry. Then I say to the person, it is well. And the person leaves my office angry and bitter. That why couldn't the man of God give me and run to buy the food there? But they don't know that in their going, in that painful situation, they are going through a process that will bring forth what they have never expected even to receive from me. Because if they come to me, they are going to get under rand. But if they go through the processing, 
God is having what eye has not seen, what ear has not heard, kept for them. So many of us, we fail to see what is coming. We are having, I don't know, they call it short sight. We are, we are short sighted. We are only seeing, short sight is the one of seeing things close to you or things far. Things close to you. I think it's called myopia. If you are having myopia, you are seeing things that are close here. You cannot see things that are, that are far. So spirit people see things that are far. Spiritual people see things that are going to happen tomorrow. When Jesus tells them that go, they know that there is a reason why he is telling me to go. And they obey the message and then go to the land and they meet a blessing. You come here, you are dating for five years. You want to marry. And you want to hear the voice of God. And then God says, no. What happens to your heart first? But I've dated this person five years. I know this person. This person is good. This person is what? what then you enter with your own will, own power. Then when a challenge comes that cannot be dealt with, you want to run back to God. To say, God, solve this issue. And then God reminds you. There's a time where I say, don't go. But you went with a human point of view. Hallelujah. So that, that message from God to say, go or don't go, was painful at that moment. Because the person is in love. But God is seeing that, no, this love is not genuine. The person with this person is lying. After one month of the wedding, she's going to, to cry. So God is saying, don't go. And you are saying, no, I think the man of God did not hear God very well. Because I also hear God very well. I dreamt the person in the dream. I'm sure there are pastors here. You have encountered people like that. You tell them a vision. God is saying, one, two, three. Then they say, wait, man of God. Even me, God showed me this thing last week. And I was praying 40 days, 40 nights for this thing. So why did you come to hear the voice of God when you hear God? <laughs> why did you come to inquire when you already know? Hallelujah. So when God is speaking to you, no matter the voice, the word that God is telling you, if you are obedient to his word, if he says jump, you just jump. If he says give, you just give. If he says, if he says cry, you just cry. If he says laugh, you just laugh. That is easy Christianity for you. When you are living in obedience to God's word, like I said, it can be painful. It can be challenging. It can, be, it can seem as if it's a delay. But it will always prove to be good for you at the end. Hallelujah. Let us rise upon our feet. Hey there. I'm F.J. Moses, the senior pastor of Revelation of Christ Church Worldwide, based in Midrand, South Africa. And I hope this Spirit Life Kingdom message has blessed you so tremendously that you are going to experience the God's original plan for your life. For more of these Spirit-filled messages, don't hesitate to contact us on the information on your screen. Good morning and be fruitful.